Hello, this is The Watchdog, and welcome back to Fun with Watches. If watches weren't fun, you'd only need one. Today, we're going to review the Parnzarpi 7148. Let's start out with the wrist check. I'm wearing an Oakston GQ7019. I wasn't able to show you the wrist shot when I did the unboxing, so I'm showing it to you now. And Grogu is wearing my Nabasi NI2321. I asked Grogu if he played any tricks when he went trick-or-treating. He said one house was only handing out dum-dums, so he thought about frog egg in the house. But for some reason, he was all out of frog eggs. Alright, let's take a look at the watch. It comes in this snapper box, which is very similar to the boxes that Pagani Design comes in. And here it is. It's a fairly nice looking watch. This is the first Parn Sarpy on my channel. I don't know, I don't even know if that's the proper way of saying it. Look at the logo. It looks like a Pagani Design logo, so it makes me wonder if it is a sub-brand of Pagani Design. Pagani Design was created so Pagani Design could sell watches in markets where Pagani was trademarked, but they were identical watches other than the branding. If this Parn Zarpy is related, then it is a lesser make. Unsigned crown, Chinese movement, aluminum bezel insert, glass crystal, 50 meters water resistance. But at least the case is and bracelet are solid steel, and believe it or not, it has a fully adjustable clasp. But most importantly, the price is right concerning what you get. I paid $37 for this, and during the big 11.11 sale, you can save a good $5. The watch is 40.3 millimeters at the bezel, and the bezel does overhang the case just a little bit. It's 47.8 millimeters lug to lug. 12.4 millimeters thick, not counting the Cyclops, and I never do. Has a 20 millimeter lug width and weighs 141 grams on the supplied bracelet with two links removed. The bezel is a 90 click unidirectional. I wish it was either 120 or 60, but that's just the way it is on a lot of these affordable watches. Uh, seems to line up okay. There's a little bit of play in it, but not horrible. The clicks are fairly good. I've definitely felt a lot worse. Then the insert. The ad said ceramic, but this insert is clearly aluminum. And if you look at the insert writing, it's white, where the rest of the watch is a Fotina. I kind of wish they would have made the writing match the rest of the watch. But the loom pip is the same color. We have the Parn Sarpy. Name and logo printed on top, then automatic printed on the bottom. There's no mention of depth rating, and you only get 50 meters for this watch, so I guess they didn't want to brag about that. And then the indices are painted on, they're not applied, and they have that Fotina. And as you can see, there's triangles at the six and the nine instead of batons that you normally see on a sub homage. But the hands are clearly sub homage, fence post minute hand, Mercedes hour hand, and lollipop second hand. And then you have the chapter ring with the minute markers. And then there's a date at the three with a cyclops. And uh, uh, the cyclops is a little bit crooked, not completely centered. The crown is a screw down crown, even though you only have 50 meters water resistance. I don't know why they bothered, probably just reusing the case. It doesn't really pop when you unscrew it, you just have to keep unscrewing until you don't see any more resistance. The crown action, it's, it's kind of, you have, you don't really, sometimes you have to mess with it to pull it out to hack it, but it does hack. And then uh, when you go to set it, sometimes you have to be careful. It usually doesn't jump, and sometimes it jumps just a little bit. As you can see, that moved just a little bit when I pushed in. So you have to be kind of careful. When you go to screw it back down there, the threads catch right away, and there's no, no effort there. The crystal is a mineral glass. It's flat. Not much to say about it. It does the job. And the Cyclops is pretty high. It does decent magnification, but not great. 
the case is solid stainless steel, polished on the sides, brushed on the tops and the bottom. It's nice to see a solid steel case here because a lot of times on a watch at this price, you'll have a chrome plated alloy instead. But this is clearly steel. You can definitely tell by the brushing here. If it was chrome plated, that would definitely be shiny. Then the case back is a screw down case back with a coin edge. Let me show it to you a little bit closer. As you can see, there's no writing on it. And I'm pretty positive it's a screw down because I don't see a slot to pry open with a pry bar or anything that you normally see when it's a fake. Uh, I do not have the tools to open this type of case back. And there's really no point of opening it up. The movement underneath is a 2813, which is a Chinese-made movement that's made by several different Chinese companies. I don't know which one made this one, and I don't really care. It's not the most reliable, accurate movement in the world, but let's put it on the time grapher anyway. Here it is on the time grapher. As you can see, it is running very, very fast. 48 seconds. So you'll be setting this watch at least once a day if you wear it. Of course, yours might not be running as fast as mine. Yours could be yours could be running slow, which would be even more annoying. You never know what you're going to get with these uh, cheaper Chinese movements. As you can see, too, the amplitude is kind of low, and the, there's quite a bit of beat error. So not the best movement in the world. The Oyster Style bracelet has solid end links. And then it has brush center links, and these are not fully articulating, they're fixed with the side links. And uh, we have screw pin adjusters and not push pin, which is kind of surprising for a watch at this price. They usually have push pins. And also, the biggest surprise of all is this clasp, it's fully adjustable, you can adjust it without tools. And you usually do not see that on these watches. In fact, uh, if you get the Pagani Design watch, which is over twice as much, you will not get this type of clasp. So you can get the perfect fit with this one, which is always nice. I'm not the biggest fan of a Rolex style clasp, but I love it when they have this uh, imitation of Glide Lock. Here's the watch on my seven and a half inch wrist. It wears nice. It's a little bit lighter than your typical sub homage of this size, about 10 grams lighter. So it wears nice and light. And since it has that clasp, you can always get the perfect fit. And I do like the looks of it. I like that Fotina. It has that retro look to it. So yeah, it looks nice. Here we are in the loom room. Nobody is expecting great loom from a sub $40 watch, but let's see if it has at least decent loom. As we speed up the time, the indices fade almost immediately, but the hands are doing much better. I would consider the hands to at least be decent. Not great, but decent. But look at that loom pip. It is still glowing like a torch. Too bad the minute hand didn't match the loom pip, then this would be great or even awesome loom. What do I like about this watch? Well, I like the fully adjustable clasp. I like this Fotina on the hands and the indices. And I like the fact you get a solid steel case even with the sub $40 watch. And I like the fact that you're getting a pretty good watch for under $40. What are my gripes and groans? Screw down crown and case back, but only 50 meters. Couldn't we have done 100? The Cyclops is a little crooked. Not a big fan of the name Parnzarpy. I think they could have came up with something a little bit more pronounceable. And the movement is really, really fast. Do I recommend this watch? Sure. This is a nice looking watch with Botina and a fully adjustable clasp. It may be fairly basic, but that fits the theme of the watch and it's reasonably priced. Well, thank you for watching my review of the Parnzarpy 7148. And I will be back with another review. Be sure and like and subscribe to my channel. Bye.